This was Military History Tour's first tour of the South African battlefields. We started in Pretoria, or Tishwane, where we visited the grave shared by Morant and Hancock. Pretoria was reached by the British forces in July 1901 and signalled the end of the conventional phase of the conflict. headed out across the high veld into the area where the second or guerrilla phase of the war raged until May 1902. Motelpa, or Anostokop, was the site in November 1900 of a battle where bushmen from all the Australian colonies attempted to capture a Boer force led by General Viljanin. Twelve Australians and 28 New Zealanders died here. Our next stop was Middleburg Cemetery where those who died at Renostokop and nearby battles were eventually interred. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we remember with thanksgiving those who made the supreme sacrifice for us at the time of war. We pray that the offering of their lives may not be in vain. May your grace enable us this day to dedicate ourselves to the cause of justice, freedom and peace and give us wisdom and strength to build a better world. The honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ the Pope. Amen. 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 So the ode now first. Oh, yeah. uh, they shall grow not old, as we that live grow old. Age, age shall, shall not weary them, them nor the years, years condemn. The but the going down of the sun, and, and in the morning, we will, we will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We had come to see the grave of Lieutenant Anthony Forrest at 16, the youngest Australian officer to die in this war. Mother, when you heard that he was killed, went to bed and died. Six weeks later, at the age of 50. Is he the only son? No, there were two other sons, my grandfather, yeah, my grandfather and an elder son, um, but it was sort of a very sad. Wilmansrost was where 21 
poorly led Australians died at the hands of a shadowing boar horse. Well, our wrecked was where the young Lieutenant Forrest was killed. Then on to the site of one of the last major battles near Ermelo, where in January 1902, 13 young Australians lost their lives. The founder of a route which is called the Highfelt Heritage Route, of which the battle at Onverwacht is part of. In the 4th of January 1902, a specific style of warfare was under the control of the British forces in this particular area, which was blockhouses, lines of blockhouses, and long lines of men that would drive the Boers against these blockhouses in an attempt to bring an end to the Anglo-Boer War. And those Boer fighters were called the Bitter Einders, the guys that were prepared to fight right up to the end uh, to justify their fight against the British. Now, there are very many versions of what I'm about to tell you. So if there's some information that kind of, you know, might sort of be a little bit overleafing on some of the information that you've got, don't worry about it. Uh, like a small valley than what it is a ravine. As they basically came up, um, the uh, Boer forces uh, were told, the, the British forces were told to stop and wait for uh, the rest of the reinforcements that were still basically moving up. So what they did is instead of settling down, they moved approximately three eighths of a mile forward, which brought them right up into the lip of this particular valley, which is just a little bit down on, on that side. Unfortunately, the trees block off a little bit of that. Now, once, they, once they'd stopped, they'd be told to halt. They're chasing after the 50 Boers. A larger group of Boers, as they passed, and we are under the standing, understanding there's probably that little valley over there, but we're under correction because we're not 100% sure, because they're actually just by sheer superior numbers. They didn't have time to celebrate this. All they did was literally grab hold of these guys and strip everything off them. Now, many of you know that that is the way the Boers actually ran the war, is they ran the war on what they could steal from the top, from the, from the Brit. So literally, they laid in, they grabbed clothing, boots, trousers, hats, ammunition. A whole group of people in this area. Gretchen, over there. Gretchen, wave your hand for me. So, and she's she's got the book of, of how this whole thing was done. I was young that day. My capacity is the leader of the tourism industry. It was a spectacular day. Big cannon shooting and a, a whole bunch of representatives from Australia were here. Um, you were going to get time to have a look at the, the blocks. And... Next we head south 
to Standerton, where the service of family members was honoured. and further south in what was in 1901 East Transvaal, we see the monument to the Boers who died protecting their land at Heilbronn. At Kronstadt, we visit the war cemetery to honour another ancestor. On our behalf, in the case, in the cause of liberty and justice, may their example move us to self-sacrifice and courage, and may we be found worthy of their sacrifice. Amen. We will remember you. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. Play uh, something else while I'm at it. Got something right now. Trekkers, and then right next to it is the memorial for all those that died in the concentration camp. So that's state phase one, phase two. At Kronstadt, we also visit the concentration camp cemetery. Just, just a, a few words. The 
the families um, were were up taken up. Everyone thought it was a, a bad uh, uh, a bad situation putting them in the concentration camps. Uh, Kitchener thought it was a way to win the war. The the commandos, the guerrilla phase of the war, commandos were uh, still pretty hard to pin down, and um, there were some uh, some desperate uh, means to try to win the war. Uh, it wouldn't have uh, been so bad. They still would have had the armistice and the victory without the heartache and the death if the the concentration camps per se had been administered it properly and uh, uh, the the uh, medical facilities would have been reasonable and They thank you for brave and faithful here at rest who gave their lives on our behalf in the cause of liberty and justice. May the example be robust to self sacrifice and to courage, and may you be found worthy to their sacrifice. Uh -huh. Thank you. Would you like your copies first? Turn around so we can just see you. Here's the third lady. Okay. Our past, the persons who come to this part of Africa and to make it possible for, for us to be also part of Africa at this stage. And uh, we really thank you for joining for this group of men and women who bring me here. To the South Point of Africa, also to share with us uh, this common, and that is the uh, uh, future of us, and that is our history. So we really appreciate you know, each and every one of you for coming here. And what we can ask you is to pray for South Africa. I think you uh, experience what we experience each day here. Yeah? We are just a few. Uh, persons uh, left in South Africa, a few, uh, um, two or three million at this stage, uh, and of the population of more or less 50 million. A few kilometres up the road then to Vredefort, where Neville House was the first Australian to win a VC. I'm surprised they would shoot at a medical. Wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? No, but then, then they might have known after he was there, you know, a jetty to work. kilometers west of Kronstadt, we visit Ogersdal to honor another of our tour group's ancestors. Venering a suburb of Johannesburg is where the peace was negotiated in 1902. in Pretoria, we drop by Morant's grave again 
for those who missed it and visit the graves of those who led the Boer republics. after the peace was signed there, we go to Melrose House where commemorative medallions are presented to members of our tour group. We're very fortunate to, to be in this room. This room is not used for anything, I believe. It's, uh, it's used to be covered off and we really thank the Melrose House uh, Chairman, for allowing us to be here today. This is, uh, well, it's the most auspicious occasion. This is the 110th anniversary to the day that the armistice was signed on this table. This is the original table, the inscription there, who was, who was attended. So we, 110 years later, have come from Australia, um, the descendants and friends of those that uh, were here in Florida all those years ago, and we find it uh, most moving to be here. And uh, particularly, we like the support of the uh, of the, the city of um, Swami. 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 Is that close? It is Swami. Uh, we are uh, very uh, very pleased to have the support from the from the city, and uh, we must thank Imelda to to uh, come here today to do the presentation for us. And we thank you very much for that as well, Imelda. We might. Uh, what I have to uh, read for you. This is a note from uh, DJ Hurley, AC, DSC, General Chief of Defence Force. World War Day 2012 was called it. Uh, on the 31st of May, 110 years ago, Australia's first war as a nation ended with the signing of the Peace Treaty of Varanengin in South Africa. And it is important we commemorate this significant event. The Boer War of 1899 to 1902 was the first time we fought as Australians and not as members of colonial contingents. The characteristics of Australian service men and women were first seen here, cemented in the World War I and tempered in the fire of subsequent conflicts. The Boer War first made the reputation of Australians as determined and resourceful soldiers, able to overcome adversity and adapt to harsh conditions and difficult circumstances. These characteristics and this reputation are still proudly held by current members of the Australian Defence Force, both at home and in operations around the world. It is fitting to remember today, and every other day, the sacrifices of their military ancestors who served the nature so well more than a century ago in South Africa. Chief of Defence Force. What we shall do now is the first uh, person to receive, and the descendants' medallions are presented to those who had a direct descendant that was here. And I'm going to call uh, Gay Atkinson forward, and, uh, and then Tom Atkinson, who will do it individually. This is in memory of their ancestors, Lieutenant Anthony Forrest, a 16-year-old, killed at Robillard Rec, with the 5 Western Australian Mounted Infantry on the 15th of May 1901, and Sergeant Henry Clarkson, who served with the 2nd Western Australia Mounted Infantry, and he was awarded a mention in dispatches on the 2nd of April 1900. Tom Atkinson. Resort report in memory of her ancestors. Major Patrick Savage, a New South Wales Special Service Officer, and Major James Rose, Commander of the 4th West Australian Imperial Bushmen. Dr. Graham Barker, in memory of his great uncle Tom and grandfather Ben Barker, both of them served with the 2nd New South Wales Mounted Infantry. Tom was killed in action on the 10th of May, 1900, at Corona Fontaine Farm. Colonel Bill Malloy, Reserve Forces Declaration. Bill is a member of the Executive of the National Boer War Memorial Association back in Australia. 
in memory of his grandfather, Second Lieutenant Lawrence Malloy. Lawrence Malloy was transport officer of the Second New South Wales Mounted Rifles. Captain Chris Stokes, RFD. In memory of his grandfather, Trooper Fred Edwards, served with the 5th South Australian Mounted Rifles. Mr. Barry Vickery, in memory of his great uncle Albert, who served with the 5th South Australian Imperial Bushman. Albert died at Cronstadt of Ontario Cleaver. We have memory medallions. Uh, these medallions are presented to friends of the Boer War Associations and friends of the Boer War uh, Federation. And uh, they've come out here to be part of this first tour, to look at the battle sites, visit the graves of those that didn't make it, and be here today on this anniversary. Mr Norm Landers. I think it appropriate now that we we have uh, Barry Clay waltzing until the force. On the road again, we're headed for Schwartrogens, where the Alliance River battle took place.
12 died in 12 days here defending this supply depot. We now head toward Mafeking of scouting legend. Not what you would call a well-maintained town. Our next stop was Vryberg, where the Australian Commonwealth Horse, the first Australian units, were first employed. In stark contrast to Mafeking, a very well maintained town. skirt Kimberley on our way to Paderberg, site of what can be regarded as the last major conventional battle in this war.
Oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Come on, mate. Take oh, that photo. Oh, the river. Here we are. Take the photo. Oh, photo. <laughs> I'll just pretend I'm doing it with a bottle of wine in my hand of glass. Yeah. Right up. Here we are. You got it, John? Right here, bloke. They weren't being shot by the Brits. The Brits were looking after him, and he should have got out. Mm. Then, then if need be, they could have. They've had a couple of built uh, wins like uh, both those places I can't pronounce. One at uh, Belmont, they pulled back into that other place that John mentioned. Preston. Then they moved back to... Um, <coughs> Modder uh, River. Modder River. Then to Magus Fontaine. Magus they had all those wins. So then they could pull out. Now, if they pulled away and were away somewhere and set a contingent in the Brits and say, look, you know, this... If Norm lays in the grass, I won't leave him behind. If Woodsy lays in the grass, I won't leave him behind. Okay. Okay. I'll never get up again. I think we'll say the ode uh, for Colonel Hannay. He, as you know, he knew that he was going to die. Kitchener had given him an unbelievable order to attack this position across this flat ground. So what he did, he sent away all of his all of his ranger staff on pretexts. Then he picked 50 men. I'd say they would have been volunteers to go with him. And they attacked across this flat ground, and he was he was knocked off his horse about 20 metres behind us. His horse was killed, and he attacked on foot, and he was killed here, and they buried him here. So I think he was a he was a hero. And he was making a protest against an unbelievable, or dreadful order. So I think we need to uh, we need to support Colonel Henry. We might say the aid for him here, in the uh, in the area, which is way out, but it is a beautiful piece of country. They shall grow it old, as we have left, left grow old. Age, Age shall not weary them, them, nor the years condemn. The At the going down of the sun, and in the, and in the morning, morning, we will remember them. I think the people who know that there's an order being given to them, the mayor has seen the first one, they go with their men and die with their men. South of Kimberley, we visit Magus Fontaine, the major defensive battle before Kimberley, the battle where tactics that would have caused the stalemate in World War I were first used. town and the monuments to what Cecil Rhodes saw as his victory.
further south, we hit Belmont, the site where in 1899, Australian soldiers, New South Wales Lancers, first saw combat. the railway junction through which most of the Australian soldiers going into combat were funnelled. Five hundred kilometres east of Kimberley, we're entering Colesburg, where the battles took place that took the lives of the first New South Welshman, the first Victoria, and the first South Australian to die in battle. the offering of their lives may not have been in vain. May your grace enable us this day to dedicate ourselves to the cause of justice, freedom and peace, and give us wisdom and strength to build a better world. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, we say the ode. They shall grow not old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. If we could now have a minute's silence.
Bloemfontein site of the museum to the Boer Republics, closed for renovation of course, and the Women's Monument. Bloemfontein, capital of the Orange Free State, was the first major prize beyond Kimberley that the British got. Yeah, because I think those people who were not far from the burgers, they keep them away as well. And most of them died, and, and I didn't have anything to go better. Mm. I mean, uh, what the is also the site of the South African Armoured School and Tank Museum. join us on our next tour to South Africa. <laughs> 